it's Rico here. Wanted to go ahead and do a follow-up video on the last video that I had that showed the carbon accumulation on the valves of my 2017 EcoBoost Mustang with 78,500 miles on it. And what's interesting is I wasn't planning on doing the cleaning after I did that video, but I figured since I had the intake manifold already open, I kind of went through and did a little bit of research to see what it would take uh, to do so and what kind of materials I would need. And I was able to go through and get the materials and go through and clean them out. And surprisingly, it turned out extremely extremely well. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you inside of the valves what they look like now that they've uh, been cleaned out. And then we'll kind of briefly go through all the materials and the process that I went through to get them cleaned out. So let's go ahead and jump right in and, and let's take a look inside these valves so you can see the difference. And then after I pull out, I'll kind of go through and show you a before and an after. Okay, so here we go. Let's dive right in. So here we are. We're going to be jumping into valve one of cylinder one and as i zoom right into here let me kind of get all focused up and let's see if we can there you go so this is valve one of cylinder one and we're going to go down to valve two there's valve two let me see if we can focus in there you go valve two of cylinder two yeah right there And we're going to go over to valve one of cylinder two. There you go. And we're going to go to valve two of cylinder two. Let me focus in on that. There you go. Let's go ahead and go to valve one of cylinder three. There it is. and valve two of cylinder three. And of course for the cylinder four, I'm gonna have to turn the camera, so hang tight. Okay, I've turned the camera, here we go. This is valve one of cylinder four. Let's see if we can uh, kind of get that a little brighter there. There we go. So there is valve one of cylinder four, and then this is valve two of cylinder four. Let's see, can we write that up a little bit? Oh, there we go. So there you go. Quite a big difference in going through that. All right, so let me go ahead and step out and turn the camera. Okay, so as you guys can see, the valves are a heck of a lot more clean than they were before. And so the way that I basically did this is I did this in um, kind of a two-step process, if you want to say. Uh, the first process is I went through and I used this CRC valve turbo cleaner solution and went through and, of course, got the valves all closed up, not open, and sprayed the cleaner inside of the chambers pretty much almost to full and let it sit there for about anywhere to, I'll say 45 minutes. And what was interesting is, is I was actually able to see that, that stuff work because it was bubbling up and it, you could tell it was doing something. And what was interesting is, is after I went through and did that, there was a video that I saw. I wish I could remember the guy's name because I really want to give him credit, but he, he basically talked about a do-it-yourself way <laughs> to kind of clean some of these valves. And so what you're basically doing is you're taking all these um, cable ties, putting them all together, and then literally putting them into a drill, and then sticking it in there and spinning it up and trying to get as much of that stuff out of there as possible. And that actually did really well. And what it, what it comes down to is, is I was putting in kind of like uh, paper towels here and then folding them up so that all the splashing and everything was hitting up to the paper towels. And basically just going in and spinning it up and jamming it in and out, angle here, angle there, to try to get as much of that stuff out. And, and it, it, like I said, with the solution in there, it, it really did a good job of trying to get as much of that stuff, especially the big chunks, out of there. And I did that with every single one of these cylinders uh, in the closed position. All right, so once I did that, I went through and used my mini shop vac here with this 
attachment. This is basically like a precision, you know, clean uh, attachment that you can use for cleaning up, you know, det detailing stuff. And since it's got the little end right here that's very close, I was able to stick that into the chamber and suck out all that fluid until it was completely empty. Okay. Then I went through with an air compressor and literally just put air inside of there to get everything out as much as uh, possible and get it dry. Okay, then after I did that, I went through the process of using the walnut shells to essentially kind of finish up and, and get everything as clean as possible. And so the way that I did that is I got this central pneumatic abrasive blaster. It was something like 30 bucks. And if you kind of look up here, there's basically what it looks like. And it's got a hose and you're filling it up with the walnut shells. And then what I kind of had to do is create a hack because this is the gun that comes with it right here. And what happens is, is on the end piece right here, you've got this little ceramic um, attachment that that's where your walnut shells or your sand is going to come out to. And as you can see, it just wasn't long enough. And so what I did is, is I went to my local Home Depot and I got this copper tubing because I knew that I was going to have to have something that was going to be firm but malleable so that I could actually bend it and be able to get it into that, um, that valve. And so here's basically what I did. There's a, um, there's a hex nut right here that I was able to loosen up and, you know, basically remove that and then cut a piece of tube, stick it in, tighten it up. And then I used just duct tape basically to seal up this area because it, it, I don't know if you can kind of see it. It's not completely flush in there. Um, and all that really was important is, is that the majority of it comes right there at the end of the tip. Okay, so basically did this. And then to finish up the, to, to kind of get it all up in there working, um, what I had to basically do is go over to my local store and get this attachment. And all it was is just an extension. And I cut it so that it was short. And then I went through and drilled a hole and just put some kind of putty all the way around it. So I tried to create as much of a good seal as I could. And then basically what it came down to was basically sticking it right here into the chamber and I had tape that I had basically gone through and covered on all these. And so essentially was able to kind of manipulate it. I could, you know, turn it this way, turn it that way, stick, stick that gun inside of there and then just squeeze a trigger and then move it up and down left and right and try to get, you know, as much of that inside of there blasted as possible. And it, it worked out really well. I had very little shells coming out of this um, mostly actually what really when it came down to was when I was coming you know bring this out is when I had most of the shells come out but very clean kind of process it was very simple and you can see that the ending results turned out pretty dang well so in a nutshell this is uh, pretty much what I did and then now you you can see the difference in going through this process like I said I went through and used the solution got all the gummies taken out then basically used that um, uh, cable tie, you know, wand and turn it around and got all the stuff, you know, taken out. And then I went through the walnut shell and blasted over it and it did the job. So this is pretty much it guys. I wanted to show you the ending solution and now it's time for me to put this car back together and let's see if any difference is in the performance. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care and as always have fun.